Welcome back, bookworms. This is Mrs. K. I'm glad you could join me. The Statue of Liberty was given to the United States as a gift from France to mark the 100th anniversary of America's independence. It was put together in France, but when it was time to ship it, they took it apart and put it in 214 boxes. It was put back together and dedicated on October 28, 1886. It is really hard to miss her. She's 151 feet tall with a 23 foot tablet in her hand. Her nose is four and a half feet long and her mouth is three feet wide. In New York's harbor, she stands for all to see. But what if she decided to step down and visit the rest of the country? Well, let's experience the magic of reading as I read Liberty's Journey, written by Kelly DiPuccio and illustrated by Richard Ilgowski, and see what happens. Upon a salt lick island shore stands a lady folks adore. A mighty beacon by the sea, she greets the tired, the poor, the free. But one day Lady Liberty wished that she could roam and see the people who had come and gone, the land they built their dreams upon. So early on that foggy morn, before the fairy's echoed horn, she stepped down from her sacred place and disappeared without a trace. Careful of the island tree, she pulled her gown up to her knees, then waded across the steel blue bay, her bold adventure underway. She tiptoed down dark sleepy streets, past bakers selling bread and sweets, through neighborhoods and alleyways. She zigzagged through the city maze, Walking west against the sky, the lady cautiously stepped by, a rusty map of railroad track, the sunrise blooming at her back. In search of amber waves of grain, she trekked beside a chugging train, through patchwork fields of green and brown, white cherry blossoms in her crown. She came upon a county fair. People paused to point and stare. The Ferris wheel slowed to a stop. A little girl called from the top. Hello, Miss Lady Liberty. My Nana waved to you from the sea. She came here on a crowded boat with just her doll and tattered coat. The girl sent up her red balloon. Come back this way again real soon. The copper giant's eyes grew bright, the gift wrapped round her finger tight. Back at home, distraught since dawn, to find their lovely lady gone, New Yorkers searched both far and wide, where could a woman that tall hide? Still the lady traveled on, not tired, sad, or woe-begone, her joy renewed by distant places, filled with children's hopeful faces. Crowds grew bigger day by day, escorting her along the way. Ranchers cheered when she arrived behind a dusty cattle drive. Across the nighttime desert sand, the lady's torch glowed in her hand. While canyon creatures sang a tune, she nestled neath a marble moon. News of Liberty's whereabouts filled New York with happy shouts. They put in place a clever plan, calling forth her every fan. Out west, their wayward liberty stood beside a redwood tree, her destination now in sight, 
warm water spilling waves of white. People on the golden bridge watched her lumber down a ridge. At long last, Lady Liberty had journeyed sea to shining sea. She smelled the fragrant ocean air. Pacific breezes tossed her hair. Ships and sailboats welcomed her, but in her heart, a lonely stir. She missed Manhattan's sounds and sights. She missed the city's brilliant lights. She missed the harbor fairy's horn. She missed her home where hope was born. Excuse me, said a boy in blue. This mail arrived addressed to you. Inside his heavy canvas sack were cards and letters. Please come back. The words brought the lady so much joy, she gently lifted that small boy to her smooth and weathered face, chiseled fine and full of grace. The boy leaned in to kiss her cheek. He would later swear he'd heard her speak. A twinkle gleamed in Liberty's eye. She set him down and waved goodbye. She traveled across the fruited plain through canyons, Black Hills, Northern Rain. New Yorkers lined the cityscape with floats and bands and ticker tape. Firefighters, kind and brave, stopped their trucks to cheer and wave. The lady greeted everyone, her faith restored, her journey done. Back upon her salt licked shore stands the lady, proud once more. Our faithful beacon by the sea is home where she was meant to be. enjoyed this story, please check it out at your local library or buy a copy from your favorite bookstore.